Hey guys, I'm Aaron. So there's a couple comments going around our forum. If you don't go there, check out forums.sketchup.com. Great place to get information on SketchUp. Uh, and actually on a couple of YouTube video comments that were talking about the use of the paste in place command versus using the outliner to nest information inside your model. I thought it'd be a good thing to look at in this week's skill builder. So those of you who watched me model before know that I like pace in place. Pace in place is a nice way to uh, isolate geometry but still model on it and then incorporate that new geometry into the existing. Um, just a super easy way to take things through different levels of components or groups. So, um, but somebody mentioned on the comments that they use Outliner to do the same thing and I was interested in this and actually it's a pretty cool, cool workflow so I want to take a look at that. Let's hop in. All right, so I just made a couple of groups of just some geometry, and uh, I'm supposing in this that I want to come in and I want to do something like, you know, I want some detail I want to put in here. Maybe it's a hubcap or some, I don't know. But I say I want to put like a hexagon inside here. I want to see what that looks like. So the way that I would go about this geometry, especially if I didn't know exactly what I was doing, if I want to play around with some options, that sort of thing, I would leave this section grouped and come and just work on the outside of it. So say I did want, say I want to put a hexagon and pull it out right in the middle. So I go here, I grab my polygon, make sure it's set to six sides, come hover over here, give me that, give me that center point. Oh, it's actually not gonna give me a, a clean center point because it's a follow me, not a, uh, not a circle. So then maybe I'll put something like this, maybe that comes out like this, and maybe it's supposed to be like a bolt too. So maybe I'll just grab a circle and pull a circle out in the middle. And then, you know, something emulating like this is a bolt that goes on here. Maybe this is a, a, some sort of a detail on something I'm making. All right, so this is the geometry I want to put in there. So right now it's separate. So the reason I did that separate is if I did do something like maybe if it, I grab this and I start scaling it up or something and it crosses the, well, I don't like that as much. So I can, I can go back and I can scale that back down. Um, without all I can do all that without ever you know merging geometry it keeps it isolated it keeps me from from stepping on my own toes that way so it's a good way to do it to keep this geometry isolated while I, while I make this piece but the question comes in now well how do I get it back together so my workflow that I've mentioned in the past goes something like this I'll take this geometry and make it a group again I'm making it a group so that if something happens, if this ends up in the wrong spot, I don't end up with geometry merged into the geometry I know I want to keep. So I would do something like this. I would take this and I would cut it. So I'm going to cut it out of there. I can take control X2. And then I'll come into context in here and just say edit, paste in place. So what that does, it puts it the absolute same location, same X, Y, Z coordinates that it was at before, but now I'm in context. I'm inside the group. It's still grouped. So now if I did have fine tunings, I want, okay, maybe, maybe I want to see what that looks like if I do, you know, align it up at the top so it's off center or something like that. I can move it around before it merges. When I'm good with where it's at, I can just hit explode. And now all this geometry exists in the same context. So now this is just one piece. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to this group. I'm going to hit command V. That's going to give me that same, that same piece right there. And I got to, now I want to align it over here. So I'm going to grab by the top. I'll just line that right up to the top piece. That wasn't quite the top. That was just a little off the top one, one segment over. There we go. And then to align it vertically, I'm just going to grab by the middle and come down vertically to there. All right, so the, now that's back in the center of this new group. Now, group, 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 group. Okay, so what I can do, so one of the things that's gonna pinch me right now is nothing's named, right? So if I look at outliners, I'm going through here, I got group, and then I got group, and then I got group. So uh, I'm gonna temporarily, I'm just gonna add some instance names. So I'm gonna call this my disk, and I'll just call this um, my bolt. All right, so now I have, and then this over here is uh, uh, finished. So now I can tell the groups apart. Um, 
Again, they are groups, they're not components, so I wasn't changing a component name, it's just an instance name of each individual group. So over here now, I'm going to start by making my finished invisible, so it's not an issue for me, I don't see it anymore. Outline is great for making individual groups components disappear uh, temporarily. And now I look at my bolt and I got my disk. So I click on bolt and I drag it down. See if I, if I, if I get that line between, that's just placing it back on the same level. If I actually place it over disk, so it highlights it like that and release it, watch it happens. It drops it underneath that disk group. So it's actually inside the group. So if I click right now, oh, it all lights up. If I double click in, this is in context. So same as I have with paste in place, I could now position it, make whatever changes I want. And when I'm ready, I could explode or not explode. I could actually keep this. So let me undo real quick. I could keep this as one piece and I could keep this as a whole nother group, both of them inside of my final disc group. So if I wanted to, I could actually keep it that way. So this could be one piece with these two pieces inside of that. That's an option too, but kind of cool because I, I mean, I, I like visual interfaces. I, like that's why I like 3D modeling is I can see stuff on the screen. So I might start using this outliner more often to move things around different uh, hierarchies like that because while I do have a shortcut for paste in place and it is, is fairly quick and easy for me to do, just dropping it over here is actually less work than copying, pasting in place. So uh, that could end up being something that I do more often. So again, this was more like a, uh, a, a potential mini workflow, um, not necessarily something you have to do, but something to get your brain rolling. Outliner is extremely useful, and it's one of those tools that I just, I don't use enough. I mean, it's over there. I can use it. I just don't get into it enough. But every time I see a suggestion like this, it kind of proves a little bit more value for that tool. Um, so yeah, let me know. Are you using Outliner yet? Are you using it enough? Do you have another workflow that involves Outliner that you think uh, other people should know about? Leave a comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of them when they release if you subscribe. Most importantly though, like I said, please do leave a comment. Let us know if there's an Outliner workflow you use that people should know about or if there's something else you think we should make a video about. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.